Spring Bulk Day 17, boys. I just tried to record this before, but it was just a big yapping session about chest day. And uh, I got to get the focus right, boys. Leg day. Today's going to be an amazing day. I'll throw in the clip of me chugging syrup a minute ago. All right, boys, you know, for whatever reason, it always amazes me how good that syrup is. Okay, that was awesome. Uh, definitely, I do plan on continuing to chug syrup to the fullest extent allowed by the law. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, isn't that like, there is some law about syrup that I heard recently. Like in some meme, like within the past six months. I don't know. Anyway, that doesn't make any sense. Creatine and collagen. I took it already. We got coffee here. 24 freaking ounces. Okay. For leg day today, we're going to be doing straight leg calf raises. Heavy. Bent leg calf raises. Heavy. Single leg leg extensions. Heavy. Lying hamstring curls or seated, just depending on what's open. Heavy. Hack squats. Heavy. And maybe some ab work if we have time and some posing. Okay. So, the plan in general for this bulk is to maximally progressively overload. Okay. If I'm not progressively overloading, then it's pointless. Don't waste your bulk. If you spent a lot of time bulking, but you didn't really get that much stronger, or your lift just went up with a body weight correlation, it's dumb, bro. Because then, like, think about it. Your bench press is pretty much totally dependent on how much you weigh. And if you weigh 200 pounds at the start of the bulk, and you bulk up 50 pounds, but your bench goes up 50 pounds, I mean, it is kind of like, all right, bro, what are you doing? If you bulk up 50 pounds, your bench should be going up a lot more than 50 pounds, in my opinion. And I'm not even suggesting you do a 50 pound bulk because most of it's going to be fat. All right. But it's true. So, you, I mean, you really need to make sure you're getting real muscular gains, real progressive overload and not just uh, fat or fat gains, you know. Oh, bro, my arms are 20 inches now. Bro, but are you 30% body fat? I'm just saying. You, don't, you want to make sure you're not getting fat gains. But anyway, boys. <sighs> I will see you guys in the gym with that Tom Platt's energy. Oh. Let's roll up the sleeves, boys. I bet you've never seen somebody roll up the sleeves on a calf raise. Well, you're freaking seeing it now. We got like one or two more. Oh. Since when did you add uh, 25s? Ah, dude, like. Have you even seen the memes? I know what kind of man you are. <laughs>
when your gym bro lives like gains 30 pounds of muscle in a month. I know what kind of man you are. That's funny. Hmm. Oh. Five reps, baby. Let's go. All right. Dude, screw this. I don't know how you guys can see this, but I'm just gonna throw on the max for a little bit. Technically, it's just 305. I can't wait to load up the stack and add more weight onto the skies. I think this is the key to getting 30 inch legs. If there was one exercise that I'd say is the most beneficial that people don't know about for adding pure leg mass, it's this. Adductors are gonna get nasty sore tomorrow. You know, I used to just play like pickup games of football with my buddies. And dude, if I had even thought about doing something this crazy, I mean, I remember one time I did a leg day with my buddy and he, he has huge legs, okay? I remember at the time he was a real young guy, like probably about my age now. And he was just repping out three plates on the squat like it was nobody's business. And you know, that was like kind of his idea of leg training, right? Just stupid, heavy, really hard. He had pretty huge legs. But dude, he had me do adductors with him, real hard and heavy after some squats. And at the time, my legs were really newbie. I didn't really have much of any leg development. And the next day I had to play football with sore adductors, like freshly sore, newbie adductors that went really hard, you know, and Dude, the day after football, my adductors literally felt like I was just like, pretty much like, could not walk whatsoever. Extreme pain, and this was, this lasted for probably about another whole seven days of just extreme soreness, and then faded away a few days after that. So anyway though, that's, that's a little adductor soreness story, so you guys wanna avoid that. Nah, don't avoid that, just relish in the pain.
Alright, we're done with this. Oh my gosh, the pump is ridiculous. You've probably heard me talk about this before. But freaking lifting shoes, need I say more? Lifting shoes are just insanely important if you want to have maximum quadricep development. I mean, what Olympic lifter have you seen with small quads? And be honest with yourself. Deeply think about it. I'm going to give you a chance to think about it. Every Olympic lifter has huge quads because they squat deep. So what am I doing? I'm taking from them and saying, if they wear lifting shoes, I'm going to wear lifting shoes too. Huge amounts of heel elevation mean a deeper squat, deeper knee bend. So that's what we're aiming for. We're not trying to do a hip wedge. You know, if I was trying to do a hip wedge, you know, I would just do a deadlift, right? Or some kind of back hinge movement, some Romanian deadlift. Wedge the weight up with a hip hinge. But I'm trying to straight up and down do a hack squat, okay? You have to demand it. You have to promise yourself. This is it right here. You have to promise yourself that you will not ever be a failure. You have to marry this thought pattern. So when you get to the gym, I don't care if you're on your deathbed and you're dying and it hurts and anything, you have to promise yourself before you get there that you are not going to go home and lose it. I would rather die than acknowledge to myself that I'm that loser. There is nothing that I won't do. There's nothing that I won't do to avoid being a loser. Dude, dude. What's up, brother? How I thought doing, I couldn't do it, man. Huh? I thought I couldn't do it, but I did. Got it? <laughs> oh my gosh, that is like the greatest feeling ever, bro. That, I feel like I'm like, oh. Oh my God, dude. That was amazing. <laughs> Woo. Stomping, bro. Stomping adds a whole new level of hype to the squat. If you're ready for it and you want to embrace the challenge and you want to accept the challenge just stop it's, it's my it's just it's my rack it's my territory and i oh my god tom platt like i was actually thinking about what he was saying in my ear he was saying promise yourself you will not be a loser if i had went home without doing that five plate squat i would have felt like a loser but i did it and I knew for sure I was gonna get at least three, somehow, even if it didn't look good. And guess what? The reps did look good. Were they a little quicker, a little less controlled than they could be? Yeah, but I think they're the heaviest weight I've ever done. So, you know, with that said, I will not feel like a loser when I go home today, because I'll know I've, I pulled a freaking five plate squat out of thin air. And that's the thing, guys, you have to push yourself to your absolute limit. Like, and part of that isn't just going to failure on weights that are lighter. You have to like prove to yourself that you can do more. Like when I was doing three plates, I could have just stopped there and said, you know what, I'm gonna just keep adding reps, whatever. And that would have worked. But there's something magical, right? About adding that intensity through going heavy. You know what I'm saying? So just keep going heavier, man, and reach your absolute limit. You have to push to your absolute limit in every metric.
All right, so my right calf is extremely tweaked. So I'm gonna do my left side. But it's okay, because I'm learning more about my body and my recovery, and it's making me a better bodybuilder. simply just helping my left leg with my right tiny bit felt very crappy so boys I don't feel like a failure I don't feel like I'm missing out if I stop now but I think I have to stop now we're gonna go pose a responsible trait to have is to stop yourself when you know that things could get hurt when you know you could get an injury and from every bodybuilder I've ever heard that is the limiting factor to their greatness. They could be greater. They could be stronger, better, bigger, if they learned how to manage their injuries. If they learned how to say, you know what, I know I can't recover from this, so I'm not gonna do it, right? And let's just acknowledge this as a side note, man. My abs are popping more than whenever I was on the cut. And boys, physique is looking great. I'm gonna have the best natural physique of all time. All right, that was pretty good. Got to get in some solid posing practice. I actually held those poses decently. I could definitely do a lot better. And I should practice more at home and whatnot, but anyway, I'll see you guys at home for what I eat. When you're warming up, when you're in the gym, you have to get ready to embrace the challenge, to accept the challenge. And you have to promise yourself, you will not be a loser. I have a freaking boatload of cherry turnovers and cinnamon rolls that I got. So, all very exciting. All very cool stuff. Leg day went excellent today. Um, regardless of anything else, I can say that I am not a loser because I squatted five plates for four reps and beat my own mind, okay? My mind was trying to convince me that no matter what I did, I could not get five plates at all, let alone for four reps. But I knew deep down in my soul 
that I could get five plates for four or at least three reps, at least three reps. So I did that and I was very successful at that. And uh, I'm just excited for next week just to see how many reps I can get next week with five plates. Um, And I want to just keep doing that weight until I can get, you know, six to eight reps, maybe around there. Probably It'll probably end up being like six and then I'll move up two and a half pounds and then try to get, you know, five, whatever, six, maybe we'll see. And just keep increasing the weight over time. And, you know, that's, that's where the real gains are, man. I'm at the point where hack squats have become very hard to progressively overload. Um, simply due to the fact that it's just heavy, man, and it's hard. But I will say this, um, my low back is just feeling amazing, like completely amazing. I haven't tweaked it in a very long time, which is exciting. And guys, I think one of the things that really helped it was doing spinal erector work, okay? I'm doing massive amounts of, well, actually, not even massive amounts. On my back days, I try my best to fit in some spinal erector work. Now, in two weeks, I haven't done any, but whenever I was doing it, and just getting a lot of blood flow and going like half the stack, dude, it was great for my spine and I haven't actually had any sort of pain in my low back in a long time. It's been uh, at least three weeks since I've had any sort of pain in my low back, so it's exciting. Anyway, boys, everything went well except for the fact that I tweaked my calf again, but I learned that it is from lying hamstring curls. For whatever reason, they really, 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 really bother my calf. Um... But it is what it is. We're going to, you know, recover, come back better. And it's less tweaked than it was last week, that's for certain. But, and I'd say that that's an improvement. So, anyway, boys, um, hope you enjoyed this video. This was an entertaining bulk marathon. I will see you guys for tomorrow's shoulder day.